Uh, the Katoomba Group is now 25 years young. We're celebrating our, uh, that 25th anniversary today, and the idea is really quite simple, which is um, how can we build value into nature? And thinking about all the ecosystem functions that nature provides, water, climate, biodiversity, but we need to really step up the investment around that, and that's the goal of the, of the Katoomba Group. And I, I think another thing that's unique about Katoomba is um, the idea of, of building a global network and, and collective action around this. So it's not any one institution, however big or small, but it's really all of us together that will get us to where we need to go. So when we look at these big systemic issues that we're facing, uh, regulation of the global climate, the biological diversity, and the regulation of fresh water, a lot of that revolves around how we manage land and landscapes. and we have been increasingly losing uh, carbon stocks, wildlife, uh, water quality regulation, and we need to start putting a price on these attributes in order to manage them sustainably and to try to create a world where we can in fact uh, conserve nature on a, a commercial basis. I'm really looking forward to understanding the commonalities on what's working well in large projects in Africa compared to Asia, compared to Australia. And a really important theme that's emerging is uh, how to not just include, but empower traditional owners of the land on which these different solutions are taking shape to create shared value so that not only is there ownership, but there's engagement on the actual land care for country can be deepened through the implementation of the kinds of projects that we're talking about. We're really hoping that um, Indigenous voices can be front and centre, uh, that Indigenous people are included um, in the roles that they perform. So we've already heard this morning about 80% um, of the globe's uh, biodiversity is protected by Indigenous people. And when you consider that we're three to four percent of the global population, that's a lot of heavy lifting. And so we really do hope that we can um, make sure that enough space is carved out for Indigenous people's voices and their activities in these projects. What I'm looking forward to is sitting down with my peers and having the conversations that we need to have around the future of these markets. It is rare that we actually get the opportunity to come together with the sort of people that are in this room. We're all spread across the planet. Uh, and so to have everybody in the one place where we can actually really discuss the, the larger project of you know, how do we put conservation and environment at the center of the economy, the way energy, housing markets, commodity markets are today. Because that's the, that's the only future that actually solves the problem. And so getting the opportunity to sit down with colleagues from North America, Europe, Africa, Latin America, have these conversations is, you know, is profoundly um, exciting and that's what I'm most looking forward to. The economic invisibility nature is one of our biggest problems. We as a people have neither understood the nature of value nor the value of nature. And it's only when we get our heads around that and collaborate and work towards conserving this hugely valuable set of assets that we call ecosystems. It's only then that we'll have a truly successful economy and society. This gathering both builds on all of the hopefully growing momentum around a nature positive economy and begins to chart new strategies and new pathways for, for, for taking it from an established idea to the real core of, a, of hopefully an, an economic system that gets us to net zero and beyond by 2050. So I'm hoping that in this gathering we have such a diversity of people that we can start to get some of the issues that have held us back onto the table. Should we be using market-based mechanisms or government regulation? Should we be looking at ways that we can integrate conservation and production in landscapes? Do we need to intensify production in some places and add more conservation in others? It, these are the debates that we need to resolve if we're going to be able to move forward together. It's critical that we get more and more people involved and we would encourage you to get involved with the Katoomba Group. We at Forest Trends would also you know, welcome others that would want to come and work with us on that. So please visit our website, katoombagroup.org, and, uh, and we are welcoming others to join us in this journey.